electric cars are the future, not only because of the environmental benefits, but also because currently of the financial incentives. It's hardly surprising then that the vast majority of new cars being released right now are electric SUVs, because SUVs are the sort of car that everybody wants. There are shed loads of them arriving at the moment. So how do we tell one from the other? And more importantly, how do we know which one is best? The best way to find out? Get them all together. We've assembled all the latest mid-size entrants into the electric SUV market from a variety of manufacturers, plus a few of the best existing incumbents to see how the new guys stack up. With no fewer than 10 contenders, this is the biggest test of its type ever committed to video. If that sounds good to you, why not subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel where you will find loads more car reviews and other content and don't forget to turn on notifications so that you never miss out on our latest videos. We all know that electric cars can be expensive to buy. Just blink at the options list on some of them and you're going to be paying six figures. But we want this to be a lot more accessible than that, a bit more real world, so we have set a cap of £45,000 and if it went over that, then it didn't even make the cut. Why £45,000? Well, we could have set the cap at £35,000 threshold that qualifies you for the government's plug-in car grant. But if you buy on PCP, which most private buyers will, then the difference in monthly payments between a 35 grand car and a 45 grand car is, in many cases, less than you might think. And that little bit extra gives you access to a whole variety of really tempting new cars. If you're looking to buy a car in the next couple of years, then there's a good chance it could be one of these. So let's meet our contenders. One of the newest cars in our test and just sneaking underneath the 45k price cap is the handsome and desirable Audi Q4 e-tron. A very different take on style and desirability, the Citroen EC4 really stands out thanks to its unconventional look at me design. It's a Mustang, Jim, but not as we know it. The Mustang Mach-E ditches V8 engines and coupe design in favour of electric propulsion and SUV style. The one they've all got to beat, the Kia e-Niro, has been around a fair old while, but during that period you could argue that it's been the best mid-sized electric SUV on the market. Another prestige badge offering that sneaks in below our price cap, a fully electric version of the established UX self-charging hybrid. Mazda is known for doing things a bit differently to the rest in terms of design and engineering, but with the MX-30 it's following the crowd in releasing an electric SUV. The third model in Mercedes' EQ lineup of electric cars. Think of the EQA as being much like the combustion engine GLA in terms of size and design, but with an electric powertrain. Another of our existing incumbents, and arguably the dark horse in this test. Much more polished than many will be expecting of an MG, very generously equipped, and also one of our cheapest offerings. Arguably a little bigger than the rest, but still qualifies as a mid-size SUV, and Skoda has a keen tradition of offering slightly bigger cars for the same money as smaller rivals. The one many expect to be the biggest success of the lot, Volkswagen has said that the ID.4's hatchback sibling, the ID.3, is as big a landmark for the company as the Beetle or Golf was, yet the ID.4 is expected to outsell it. To give the cars a thorough shakedown, we've come to a place in rural Oxfordshire called Bicester Heritage. Handily, it's got its own one kilometre test track for us to drive the cars on, and it's also got lots of other space for us to conduct our other tests. But there's actually a lot more to it than that. This site was once known as RAF Bicester, and it was operated as a bomber station and training base for the Royal Air Force during World War II. Today, its purpose is very different. After decades of neglect in the years that followed the war, the majority of the historical buildings have now been tastefully renovated and are now home to dozens of different businesses involved in the classic car industry. Dealers, mechanics, restorers, you name it, all in one place. Think about what a marina is to boats, this place has that feel about classic cars. So when you think about it, what this place has done is to take the history of transport and repurpose it for the future. And that is why it feels like an appropriate place to conduct a test of electric vehicles. 
So how is all this going to work then? Well, we're going to carry out a number of different tests to assess the cars in different areas. Areas that are of vital importance to EV buyers. I'll be conducting the first of them and that is a family friendliness test because most SUVs, electric or otherwise, are used as family cars. We'll be assessing space, practicality, versatility, quality and durability. How does the car cope with large items of cargo, child seats, lanky teenagers, that sort of thing? I'll be taking care of the second test where we look at the real world usability of our electric cars. After all, there's not much point in chucking the kids in the back if the car's not going to get you to where you're going. So I'm going to look at the range, the efficiency and the charging times on these cars, all of that critical electric car stuff. And of course, if they can be comfortable, maybe even a bit fun to drive, then that is all for the better. Bit of a hint at this point, there is going to be a lot of information coming at you thick and fast over the next couple of minutes. So to process it all fully, you might want to employ the services of your pause button. So without further ado, let the testing commence. Very generous cabin space and a big boot and a split level boot floor for extra versatility. Build quality is a bit disappointing for an Audi though. A really comfortable ride and controlled handling, but overly light steering means there isn't much of a feeling of dynamism. The fastest charging car and one of the longest official ranges. Not the most efficient, but the big battery helps to make up for that. One of the smallest cars, but still pretty roomy inside nonetheless. However, the cabin quality doesn't match the pizzazz of the exterior styling. A beautifully cosseting ride makes for a comfy life, but it's not so accomplished in corners, with lots of body roll and massively light steering. The Citroen's 100 kilowatt rapid charging and circa 200 mile official range is becoming quite industry standard, and it's really all you need. It's a shame that you can't cap battery charge at 80% for routine use, but other than that, there's very little to complain about. Quality is impressive for a Ford, but not dazzling in this company. Roomy rear seats, decent boot space, and space to store the cables under the bonnet. Scintillatingly strong performance and tight handling, but does feel heavy in the corners. An overly firm ride for a family car too. Good efficiency for such a big, powerful car, and with all the charging features and remote phone controls that you'd want. Others have got faster rapid charging though. Very solidly built and interestingly designed, but weak in other areas. Tight rear seats, dark cabin, and a small luggage space. Among the leaders for performance and rides fairly comfortably. However, the steering is light and vague and noticeable road noise dents the refinement. It's disappointing that the Lexus doesn't have CCS rapid charging compatibility and this is one of the slowest charging cars here despite being one of the more expensive. Roomy rear seats despite a small footprint and the boot is big enough for the needs of most families. The quality is very solid, if rather unexceptional. The Kia is great fun. It feels lighter than the Ford and turns just as sharply with more feedback in the steering. Crucially, it also has a comfier ride. This is the most efficient car here and you will even exceed that claimed range in summer conditions. It charges quickly enough and has all the charge control features that you'd want as well. The least practical car here, the rear seats are super cramped, the rear doors hinder your access and the boot is tiny. The ride in the Mazda is mostly comfortable, but the body leans more than you might think and the steering feels quite inconsistent and acceleration is quite noisy as well. The short range and slow CCS rapid charging will limit the MX-30's appeal and usability, but the free home charger is a nice sweetener. Poshest interior by a mile. Good rear legroom, but tight headroom. The boot is small and there's no underfloor storage for your cables. A really comfortable car and it changes direction crisply and securely. 
their strong responsive performance and it's impressively quiet on the move. Some might expect faster rapid charging from a prestige brand, but still up to the industry standard 100 kilowatt rapid charging. Lots of space for long limbs in the back and plenty of room for luggage as well. A brilliant option for eco-conscious families on a budget. Soft suspension keeps life comfortable, which is great for families, but the MG does start to feel rather untidy and unruly in corners. This would benefit from faster rapid charging, but also from better charging functionality, including remote control via a phone app. The cabin is every bit as huge as the Audi and the Volkswagen, but it has a significantly bigger boot than anything else here. Lots of family-friendly touches as well. The comfortable ride will keep any family happy and it changes direction crisply and confidently. Meanwhile, the performance is strong and responsive. It's definitely worth adding the optional 125 kilowatt rapid charging as otherwise the Skoda is subpar in terms of the charging times. There's little to complain about otherwise and the range is great. The interior feels slightly more stylish than the Skoda's but no posher. It has a smaller boot as well, but it's still impressively big and has identical passenger space. This feels very similar to its Audi and Skoda counterparts in all areas, but as they're so impressive, that's really no bad thing. The ID4 is getting on for Audi Q4 charging speeds, and it's got a long range and all of the charging control features that you'd want. So, with our exhaustive tests now complete, we retire to our judging quarters to consider our verdict. Our task is simple, whittle our 10 cars down to a top two. So, we have got our 10 contenders and we need to get rid of eight. So, where do we start? Can I propose the first car for elimination? Mazda. Yes. I do that with a bit of a heavy heart because it looks great, the interior is fab, I love that cork finish, and it drives quite nicely, but we've said all along that we're looking for a family SUV and it just doesn't cut it. The boots, mm. one of the smallest, uh, <laughs> it's so tight in the back. The rear hinge doors, just, it makes it too hard to get in and out. So as a family car, it just doesn't work. I mean, I like the Mazda 2. I think it sort of makes sense as a rival to stuff like the Honda e maybe, but here it's just totally outclassed. Yeah. So yes, okay. agreed. Lose it. Lose it. Right. I would like to propose the Lexus okay. as the next one to go because, again, it's not very practical. It's got that awful touchscreen oh, pad. Yeah. Awful. It's got Chadamo charging, which is quite an outdated sort of yeah. charging socket. It's quite expensive. It's very expensive. It's perfectly nice to drive, actually. Yeah, it's so short on practicality. Again, yeah. the boot is small, the back seats are are tight, the, the rear windows are so small that the back of the cabin is really dark and gloomy, which is going to make your kids miserable. So, um, they'll make you miserable. Yeah. So I think let's get rid. It's definitely. It's not, it's not a good family SUV. No. OK. OK, my turn to nominate again. I am going to go for the MG. I think there's a lot to like about this car. It's big, it's roomy, it's well equipped. And despite its super low price and the MG badge. It doesn't feel out of place here uh, in terms of interior quality. I think the interior is actually really good. It's also really comfortable, which is great for a family car, but as soon as you start asking it to change direction, it starts to feel a bit clumsy and untidy. And, and with that much wallow on sort of twisty roads, it, that kind of harms its comfort overall. Uh, yeah, I'd agree with all of that. And there are aspects of the build quality, things like the flap on yeah. the charging ports, really flimsy. Mm. And also aspects of the charging, it's quite slow charging by comparison right. to the others, so 50 kilowatt. And also the lights that tell you whether the car's charging properly and this kind of thing that you can't really see them in daylight. There's uh, little okay. details like that. It falls down on a bit. So yes, I would agree. I think MG goes next. Okay. Get so we're me. getting rid of that one. Sorry, MG. I am going to go for the Citroen, okay. which I think has got merit. I think it's quite cool and quirky in its own way and surprisingly spacious. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, but also, I mean, masses of body lean. Yeah. Again, as soon as you ask it to change direction, it just falls yeah. on its door handles, doesn't it? That infotainment system's not great either, is it? There's aspects of that that's really annoying. Again, it's got a lot going for it, but I think 
it's so stunning from the outside, or impactful at least, the interior just doesn't measure up, either in terms of its design or its quality. It's, it's just a bit drab in there. You and I will have to agree to disagree on the looks of it. <laughs> I think it looks brilliant. Everything else I agree with, so I think the Citroen's <laughs> probably gone. Okie doke. Next up, well, we were talking yeah. about the Volkswagen Group cars, weren't we? Yeah, it's a bit of an elephant in the room, isn't it? Because three of our remaining six are all essentially the same car, and they're very hard to uh, separate. They're, yeah. like, in terms of interior space, there's nothing in it. There are slight nuances in the way that they drive, but the differences are really marginal, yeah. and essentially, for that reason, they kind of all have the same character. So it, it's a bit of a question of how do you pick between them? Yeah, so we've got the Audi Q4, the ID4, and the Skoda Enyaq. As you say, all cars based on the same platform. They all drive much of a muchness. Infotainment systems, all much the same. I would say the Audi has got the fastest charging of all okay. of them. But even so, I think ultimately when you're talking about family SUVs, you know, the Skoda and the ID4 have got sort of similarly good charging. It's a shame you have to pay extra to yeah. get the 125 kilowatt on the Skoda, but That's it's only like just over 400 quid. Yeah. And given how well priced the Skoda is, it's gonna come down to the fact that the Skoda is offering much the same package for yeah. kind of better value, isn't it? I think if you're choosing with your heart, you go for the Audi or the Volkswagen. If you're choosing with your head, then the Skoda offers you more, but charges you less for it. It's got the biggest boot, it's got the longest range, it's the sensible choice. And if you're making a decision based purely on logic, the bare bones of it is, is that the Skoda costs more than £2,000 less than the Volkswagen and almost six grand less than the Audi. And for the sake of a little bit of badge snobbery, mm. uh, you know, I think let's lose these two. We, we, can, we can still say that these are excellent cars and if you buy one, you're, you're getting a brilliant thing, but... Yeah. Totally recommendable. And not bad monthly prices either. Absolutely, I don't yeah. that. That's the Skoda through, I think. What about our other three? I'm really taken with the Ford Mustang, I have to say. I really, really like it. Yeah. I like the way it drives. It's a really big car. It's a significantly yeah. bigger car than either the Mercedes yeah. or the Kia. And it's got the storage in the front. Um, it's got that fantastic, you know, it's got to be said, it's very Tesla style yeah. um, infotainment, which I really like. I think Ford's done a great job with it. But... It is also quite expensive for the yeah. range you get compared to the others and the long range Mustang because there's two batteries yeah. available on that. We're testing the smaller battery because that's what you get for the money. Yeah, it's that's a big it. price jump up to, it, the, to the long range. Well, it's about nine grand or so, something. Which is it? a bit of a shame. And, and, you know, at that point, it would be the longest range car here. But as yeah. it is, smaller battery. So not quite up there with range on the Skoda and that kind of thing. I mean, it looks great. It's fun to drive. Mm. It's it's fast as well. It doesn't feel as practical as it should be, given the fact it's an absolutely massive car. And it does feel heavy in it the does. corners. Yes, it, it does. It's, it's huge uh, and, and slightly unwieldy. But it does have that USP of, of the sporty character. With the Mercedes, that's got a USP as well, and that is that interior. Mm. It is yeah. sensational, isn't it? It's, it's head and shoulders above anything else here. It's probably a bit disappointing that Audi didn't get closer to, to the Mercedes on that yeah. score because, you know, that's what they're known for. But that's not Mercedes' fault. Hats off to them. It's nice to drive. It rides well. It handles tidily. Only problem with it is, is we're looking, again, we're looking for a family SUV and it isn't all that practical. It's the not. rear headroom it's pretty tight, the boot is pretty small, yeah. and it's really annoying, especially at this money, that what small amount of boot space you do have is taken up by bags of charging cables because there's no underfloor storage, which yeah. is a bit rubbish. It is a bit tricky on that front. It's also, so it's 100 kilowatt charging, which is, I mean, honestly, that's really all that you need, yeah. but it's still not quite what you get on, um, on some of the others. Yeah. So, well, it's on a par with the Kia, but I think they're both brilliant cars, the Ford and the Mercedes, but we haven't actually talked about the Kia yet. Yeah. And I mean, let's face it, that's probably because it kind of does everything. And I think if we're looking for value and the way things drive and practicality, I think probably this and the Mercedes are both probably going to fall by the wayside next to the other two, aren't they? A little bit, yeah. I mean, the, the great thing about the Kia is it doesn't look like much, but it drives fabulously. Mm -hmm. Like the ride's comfortable. It's so controlled in corners. The steering's fabulous. Yes. And it's got, you know, it's got enough punch to, to give you that excitement factor. It's 
more practical than the Merc. Only, only just, but enough to make a, a big difference, I think. I mean, it's the oldest car here yeah. by a mile. Yeah. And yeah, it does feel like Kia absolutely nailed absolutely. the family electric car by out of the box. Yeah. I, I lived with one of these for six months. I've done, you know, 12,000 miles in it. I love it. It's just a wonderful car to live with. It shows brilliant. you that new isn't necessarily always better. No. And with a facelift, the infotainment system is brilliant. It is just, just wonderful, that car. Um, I mean, it's, it's ugly, I'll be honest, <laughs> I, th I think. It's, but, uh, yeah, it's got a face like a slapped will, haggis, isn't I will, it? <laughs> I will forgive it that. But, but I, think, I think the Mercedes and the Ford are gone, aren't we're they? We're losing the Merc and the Ford. And there we have our finalists. Now that we've got our final two, we are going to take them on a good old-fashioned road trip to get to know them even better. Again, we're going to be conducting a variety of tests along the way, and based on the outcome of those, we'll be crowning our electric SUV champion. following day we head east from Vista and we're not on the road for all that long before we decide to jump in the same car for our first test. A good old-fashioned game of electric car, name that tune. Okay, so what's this all about? Well, this is all about how quiet these electric cars are because I mean we always talk about how quiet they are, lovely and refined, but we do want to know specifically how quiet and more importantly okay. which one is quieter. Okay, so how are we going to do that? I've come up with a plan. We are going to pick some songs from your Spotify playlist. I'm sure they okay. won't be embarrassing at all. And oh, uh, you I'm going absolutely. to <laughs> And uh, I'm going to gradually turn it up one notch at a time until right. you can hear what is playing and then you've got to tell me what song is playing, okay? Right. That's and, actually uh, quite clever, but you're still a swine. <laughs> So basically what you're doing is taste shaming me on camera. Yes, I'm Thanks exactly. very much indeed. Finding... Our Guru's HR people, if you're listening to this, no, I'm not happy. This is a very scientific test, I'll have you know. It's quite Absolutely good. scientific. It's got nothing to do with humiliating you at all. Right. Well that's good to know. That's just a happy <laughs> circumstance, is it? It's just a lovely byproduct. Of course it is. Thanks anyway, very much. we are on your everyday dual carriageway out here. So we're gonna be doing what about 60 miles an hour? Yeah, about that. And we are in the Skoda, obviously, right now. So, here we go. First song. I'm going to start this on silent at the moment. Cl close my eyes then. To try and listen. <laughs> That's not a good idea, is it? You're allowed to have your eyes open. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start now. I'm okay. going to start turning it up. Right, watch one. I'm turning it up on my phone so we're not relying on the, uh, on the sound system no, in the car. I'm, I'm not getting that. Okay, second notch. I'm really trying not to look. Um, No, not it's getting super it. quiet this car isn't it? It really is. There's no motor line at all enough. in this thing. Third notch. And if you're wondering why you can't hear any music, it's because it's still so quiet that our microphones can't actually pick it up. Is that Reach by S Club 7? <laughs> yes, yes ah. it is. You have got S Club 7 on your Spotify playlist. What is wrong with you? Oh, <laughs> you're a fully defy, grown man. I defy anyone to listen to that song <laughs> and not be cheerful. Okay, fair enough. Look. I'll leave, I'll leave S Club 7 alone. What I would say <laughs> is that I think the Skoda is really very quiet, even by electric car standards. So, onto the Kia. Okay, so here we are in the Kia on the same stretch of road. Like I said, this is all very scientific, this test. Absolutely. So I'm going to start now. You ready? Go on then. Right. First notch. No, kick it up one. Second notch. No. It's quite a bit one more tyre noise in this, isn't there, I think? Yeah. Okay, still can't get it. Up one more. No. Oh. Need another. Fourth notch. Fourth notch. That means you're a notch up on the Skoda already. Oh. 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 You've picked yellow by Yeah, player. there you go. Now um, you know. I'm now not... that I am slightly ashamed. <laughs> oh, really? I think it's a. I think it's a classic. I will be. I'm unashamed uh, of my love of Coldplay. Oh and. I'm unashamed of my love of the Kia, even though I have to say, I think it's quite clearly a bit noisier. It is that tyre noise, it's quite a bit more road noise. A bit more wind, but it's tyre noise more than anything. It certainly is. So I think that is another score one for the Skoda. Yep, 
I would agree. We've found our top dog of tranquility, so we're going to split back into our individual cars to press on with the journey. But we're not going to stick with them. To make sure that both of us get a good feel for both contenders, we're going to spend the next couple of hours chopping and changing between them as we make our way steadily eastward. That is, of course, until we arrive at our next stop to face our next test. The reason SUVs are so popular is that they deliver family-friendly practicality, but in a package that's fashionable, desirable, and stylish. But it's clear to see just by looking at us that we know very little about style. So what we need is to talk to someone who does. So we've come to a place that's been a mecca of British fashion for more than 30 years. With more than 300 shops, restaurants and attractions set in around 150,000 square metres of prime Essex real estate, Lakeside is one of the largest and best known shopping centres in the UK. And even if you don't know a lot about fashion, Lakeside has you covered. Did you know, for example, that having your own personal shopper isn't merely the preserve of the rich and famous? Nope, if you need to know what's in and what's out this season, or what styles or colours are going to suit you best, then free of charge and with no obligation to buy anything, Lakeside will provide you with your very own personal shopper to come along with you on your shopping trip and give you advice. And here she is. Carly Knoll has been a stylist and fashion expert for almost 20 years and has run the personal shopper service at Lakeside for more than five. And with so much experience of what's hot and what's not, who better to tell us which of our cars hits the spot for style? So, Carleen, before we start, what do you think of what I'm wearing? Well, I think it's a good job that you choose cars and I choose clothes. Moving swiftly <laughs> on. Right, OK, so yes. to the cars, first impressions. What do we think, sort of, uh, from, from the kickoff? Both really nice. I mean, white is classic but red is my favourite colour and that one kind of jumps out at me straight away. Sweet, okay. Anything sort of in terms of design features that you particularly like or dislike? I'm not sure why this is here. It's a bit asymmetrical, isn't it? Yeah, it's... I mean, I understand obviously it's need, but it could be on the side where the petrol... Would look a bit more natural, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, uh, what about the Skoda? Anything there that's grabbing you? I mean, I like all the kind of angles that is, that's going on yeah, on the car. It? OK, should we head round to the back yeah, or sure. down the sides and yeah. see if there's anything that's... Wheels, anything? They're quite big. I mean, I like that. I like yeah. big, big wheels. Um, I like the size of the car generally. Yeah. It feels like an SUV. Feels I feel like, like muscular. Yeah, it feels like I'm driving a car. Yeah. Where the other one just perhaps feels like a... A bit more hatchback. Yeah, than a SUV. bit more. Exactly, okay. yeah. So, um, again, I, I love the detail. I love, I love the way it's designed. OK. Anything about the back that's, that's grabbing you, like the, the lettering on the, on the back? Or I mean, the... I don't mind that. I mean, I think that would surprise a lot of people. If I, if I drove past in this car and they saw Skoda, I think they'd be quite surprised. Yeah. Or maybe that's just me. Um, but I like it. I think it's very neat. It's very simple yeah. and, and quite stylish. I like it. Fair enough. OK, should we take a look inside? Yes, let's do it. Right, so... Thank you. OK. So what is it that grabs you initially about this one? Well, what is this? <laughs> this looks very futuristic to me. It does, yeah. Uh, it, it looks like my son's tablet. It's like having my phone just there. Which you're not supposed to have. Which you're not supposed <laughs> to have, exactly. Yeah. I noticed straight away it doesn't have leather seats. OK. So I do like leather seats. Yeah. I'm partial to some Fair enough. leather. And this kind of... Textile, textile on the dashboard. I mean, all it takes is one lot of sticky fingers touching that, and I feel one like chocolatey hand. Yeah, that's... I feel like that will kind of be ruined and you know not look as good as it does now. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not really. It's not really grabbing me the okay. inside of this car. Fair enough. Okay, should we hop in the other one? Yes, please. Oh, very nice. How are we feeling about this one? Oh, very nice. OK, I can see they've got the whole similar screen going on. Mm -hmm. But this one's much smaller. It doesn't feel like it's, it's not in, so in, in, your face, in my it? face, intruding my space. So I like that. This all feels very familiar for me. Like, What's your current car? My car is uh, a Range Rover Evoque. OK, so it's just all, the all the buttons and dials and stuff are kind of more familiar to you. Yes, most definitely. Okay. I can kind of manage everything here. I love the leather seating. I love the way it feels. It's very airy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, loving this. So here you've got kind of like this polished black finish rather than the textile. Is that something you prefer? Yeah, this is a bit of me. I mean, it's very all similar right. to my car. Yeah, I, I, I really like it. I prefer this. It's a clean simple stylish finish yep. for me on the inside yeah exactly okay right then let's jump out 
So I think the big question after all of that, if you, with your stylist head on, yes. had to pick one to be the stylish choice of the two, which would it be and why? It would be the outside of the Skoda uh -huh. with the inside of the Kia. Okay. That would be the perfect match. Righto. As we don't have that as an option. Afraid not. For me, it would have to be the Skoda. Okay, thank you very much. Win for the Skoda. So now that we know what's what in the fashion stakes, we press on towards our final destination and as we make our way, we're going to take the opportunity to reflect on the character of our cars. The thing I really like about the Kia is that it's a very unintimidating car. I think a lot of people, especially if they're going to an electric car for the first time, which a lot of people are, they sort of worry a bit about what an electric car is like to drive. Is it going to be a bit weird? The Kia is anything but weird. It's a very friendly car to drive. Everything from, you know, the control weight through to the fact that it's quite a compact car. So this is a bit more sort of Ford Focus sized, the Kia, whereas obviously the Skoda is a significantly bigger car. It's just a very easy car to drive. You get in and it feels like you've owned it forever. I think for anybody who's coming to an EV for the first time, that sense of familiarity and it just being really easy to drive will be um, quite a confidence booster if you're worried about what an electric car is going to be like to drive. That Kia really is a great little car, but that's exactly what it feels like, a little car. It's no bad thing in itself, it just feels a little bit more hatchback than SUV. The Enyaq, on the other hand, is bigger, it's bolder, more SUV-like, and that's got to be a good thing in an SUV test. The other thing to note about the Enyaq is that although it's an electric Skoda, it still feels like a Skoda and it delivers on all those traits that Skoda has delivered on over the years. It's bigger and more practical than most of its rivals. It's got all those family friendly little touches that make family life that little bit easier and it's more keenly priced than most of its rivals as well. And that means, as we said earlier on, that it's got all those logical boxes well and truly ticked. Now, I've been specialising in EVs for quite a few years now, and um, I've talked to a lot of people who are thinking about going to an electric car. They might be a bit on the fence. The reason that the vast majority of them aren't sure is because they're worried about public charging. And to be honest, I can understand why. It's not a great reputation at the moment for the charging infrastructure in the UK, aspects of reliability, and more than that, even when you do get to uh, a rapid charger, that is working, quite often there's only two or three connectors. So if there's a queue or one or more chargers out of order, then you're going to have a long wait ahead of you. However, that is not the case here in Braintree. This Essex town is home to the GridServe electric forecourt, which you could argue changes the game for electric motoring. This place has got no less than 30 rapid chargers. And while your car recharges, so can you, because the electric forecourt also has a variety of shops and food and drink outlets to chill out in. Before we go any further, I'm gonna talk about charging, because charging in a modern electric car, really, it's more of a language problem than a technology problem, because the vast majority of modern electric cars, they have exactly the same sockets, and they're all compatible with exactly the same public chargers but it's still really intimidating when somebody starts throwing around phrases like kilowatt hours and CCS, and of course that means nothing to the vast majority of us. So consider this, your beginner's crash course to charging an electric car. And I am going to start with this. This little socket up here, this is a type two socket. You will find it on every electric car that you buy today. And this socket is what you will use to charge the car when you use your home wall box, or you'll also use this when you charge at slower public chargers, which you typically find in supermarket car parks, that kind of thing. Um, you don't need to worry about it too much other than to not rely on a type two if you can avoid it, if you're on like a long journey and you need a really quick top up and you want to carry on because you're gonna be looking at hours rather than minutes for a decent top up from one of these. You will also need to bring your own cable when you charge up using a type two socket. Every electric car comes with that cable. So don't panic about that either. The rapid charging stations that we've got here at GridServe and that you're gonna increasingly find up and down the motorway service stations in the UK, they're a bit different. So these things, they come with their own cable. So you don't need to bring your own and they plug into the CCS port down here which it does actually incorporate that type 2 socket at the top 
you just get to the station. That is your CCS socket, and you plug it in here, and you're away. Now, the grid surf chargers are really good because you just use a contactless card and go. Some of them you have to have apps. That can be a bit of a faff. It's getting a bit better. So increasingly, you can just pay with contactless, which is great. Now, a CCS rapid charger. Sometimes it's also called a DC charger. That is called direct current. It's a fast charger. So it's a DC CCS rapid charger that you're looking for when you're on a long journey and you want to get a quick top up. You're looking at 50 kilowatts charging speed minimum at a DC rapid charger, which in normal layman's terms means you're going to get about 100 miles of range in something like 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the temperature, the condition of your battery. These do go up to 350 kilowatts, which is what you will find here at GridServe. And that is as fast as you ever need, really, because if you plug in a 350 kilowatt charger, you're going to get 100 miles of range before you can get to the loo and back, basically. However, the thing to know is that the charging speed is dictated by the vehicle, not the charging station. So you've got your 100 kilowatt Kia e Nero here. If I plug that into one of those 350 kilowatt stations, I'm still only going to get 100 kilowatt charging speeds. However, if I plug this car into a 50 kilowatt charging station because the station hasn't got the power that this has, I'm only going to get 50 kilowatts. So know the specs on your car, know how fast your car can charge, and you shouldn't really have any nasty surprises when you're rapid charging. The other kind of easy stuff that you should know, you can plug in when it's raining. Of course you can, that's an obvious thing. Lots of people still worry about it. And apart from that, remember that when you're charging, especially at a rapid charger, you get a much, much slower charge when the battery is charging from 80% to 100%. So as the battery gets more and more charged, the charging speeds drop. And that really is everything that you need to know about the basics of charging an electric car. There's loads of advice on Car Gurus UK, of course, and more than anything, just don't be scared by it because they're really easy to live with. And especially with the infrastructure improving at such a rate as it is now, charging an electric car has never been easier. With our cars plugged in and feeding on some well-earned electricity, it was time to deliberate on our verdict. Both cars had impressed, but which would be our winner? Right, so we've got quite a decision to make here. Um, both our cars, I think it's fair to say, are very different, but I think we'll agree that they're both absolutely brilliant at the same time. Oh yeah, they totally are. I mean, you know, all 10 cars that we started with, they're so good and they've got a real kind of, each of them have got different strengths and it just goes to show that there's some really good options for electric car buyers right now, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, gone are the days when there was only a handful of decent electric car yeah. options to choose from. Like, there's now real variety on offer and that can only be good for the future of electric cars. Oh yeah, totally. But this is a test <laughs> and it's not much of a test if we don't have a winner. That's true. We do need to nail our colours to the mast and I think given the family car brief that we set out at the beginning, I think I know which one I'm rooting for. Yeah, I think with that brief in mind, I think I do too. A superb electric car, a superb family car. The Skoda Enyaq is our new electric SUV champion. We'd love to hear what you think of this video, so please do let us know in the comments. If you liked it, please do share it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're in the market for any of these cars, or any car for that matter, then visit cargurus.co.uk for great deals from top-rated dealers.